Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on understanding the effect of the transformations y equals minus f of x and y equals f of minus x. So we've got this question, the curve of equation y equals f of x for some unknown function f has the maximum point p3 minus 2. Find the image of p on the curve with equation y equals f of minus x and y equals minus f of x. So what's going on here? is that we've got some curve y equals f of x. We don't know exactly what the curve looks like because we don't know what the function f is. It's some expression in terms of x, but we know there's some point three minus two. And it says it's the maximum point. It doesn't really matter for the perspective of the question, but let's just say the curve is then going down. Then this maximum point here will be three minus two. Now, we're modifying this expression in some way. Whatever f is, whatever that expression in terms of x is, we're changing it slightly to get a new expression in terms of x, and we want to know what is happening to that. Now, I previously had a summary table on how different modifications to the function affect the graph. So we looked to see if the change to the function was inside the function or outside the function, and depending on the answer to that question, then the axis affected would either be x or y. And if the change was inside the function, we do the inverse or the opposite of whatever the change was. And if it was outside the function, we don't do the opposite, so we just do what we expect. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So, for example, if we look at y equals f of minus x, Let's say I put a minus 1 in there. What's happening here? Well, compared to the original equation of y equals f of x, we've changed something inside the function. So it's going to be this row here, so it's going to affect the x-axis and do the opposite. Now, what's happening to x? We're multiplying it by minus 1. What's the opposite of multiplying by minus 1? Well, dividing by minus 1. But to be honest, multiplying by minus 1 or dividing by minus 1 doesn't make a difference. So we're negating the x values. We're timesing or dividing the x values by minus 1. So if we take the point 3 minus 2, if we negate the x value, so times by minus 1, the 3 becomes minus 3. If it was negative, it would become positive. And we're not doing anything to the y values, so that stays as minus 2. Now, if we were to draw the effect of that, the 3 minus 2 is like here. And the new point is minus 3, minus 2, which is over here. So that point is becoming that point. And if I had, say, a point here, that would then, if we're negating the x value, that point would then become here. Can you see what the transformation is here? We're actually reflecting it in the x-axis. So this has the effect of reflecting in the x-axis. Now, you don't need to memorise that. You just need to memorise this table and see that because the change was inside the function, we're going to negate the x values, and that's what we did here. We didn't actually need to describe this transformation. What about b? If we had y equals minus f of x, this change, you can think of it as timesing by minus 1, this change is outside the function, it's outside the function brackets, so it's going to affect the y values and do what we expect. Well, we're timesing this f of x by minus 1, so it's going to affect the y value, and it does what we expect. We're going to times the y value by minus 1. So that's the effect of negating the y values. So if we had 3 minus 2, as before, if we negate the y value, the minus 2 becomes plus 2, and the x value is unaffected, so we get the point 3, 2. And similarly to before, if we're negating the y value, then a point down here would become a point up here. We're actually reflecting in the x-axis. So that's the same as reflecting in the x-axis. But again, you don't really need to know what the transformation is. You just need to use this key table over here to decide what happens to that coordinate.